Frank had waited decades for the continuation of the Star Wars saga, so he was a wee bit excited about the release of The Force Awakens in 2015. Even though he had reserved an entire theater for colleagues, family, and friends, he was still anxious about getting a good seat. So he and a couple of buddies arrived hours before showtime to stake out prime viewing territory mid-theater. Perhaps inspired by someone joking that his giddy anticipation was approaching ecstatic levels, Frank pulled down his pants, but not his boxers, mind you, and had a friend photograph him sitting by himself, gazing up at the screen. He then pixelated the photo over his nether region and posted it on Facebook with a caption about how his excitement over Star Wars was reaching a climax. In a matter of minutes, his post was reported to Facebook as an obscenity. But how would Facebook respond? From our studios in Charlotte, North Carolina, this is the Psych Bites Podcast. The Psych Bites Podcast is where mental health professionals offer practical psychology to enhance your life. I'm Dr. Craig Pullman, neurodevelopmental psychologist. I'm Jennifer Feitz, licensed professional counselor. In this episode, we're talking about social media. Is it a friend or foe? In the opening, you heard just part of the true story of Frank's movie theater Facebook pixelation. After we discuss the history of social media and talk through the good, the bad, and the ugly aspects of it, we'll hear the end of that story. So be sure to stick around for that. Feitz, before we get into our topic, we need to briefly talk about a couple of things. And first of all, you know, the, our podcast is available all the usual places, and it really is helpful if people subscribe. Yes, because as a piece of that, we want to hear from you. We want you to subscribe. We'd like for you to listen on a regular basis, but we'd also really love to hear from you about content, questions, feedback. What do you think? How are we doing? What could we do better? And then really, we'd love to ultimately be hearing from you guys about what you'd like for us to be speaking about. Absolutely. And and. Uh, in the um, in the realm of feedback, we also need to talk about our caricatures, <laughs> which I'm low key obsessed with. By the way, yeah, you were. Really I fancy. want like t-shirts, mugs, pencils, because they're so, so fun. They're so, so well done. So J- Jamil, our, our graphic uh, design intern, created yes. these. Mm-hmm. And so, what, what what do you think of your caricature? Um, I I think it is uncannily somewhat accurate. Um, I think she captured you beautifully. I mean, I think you sort of are a walking caricature, Craig, with all the love in the world. You have okay, like such I an animated sure face. No, you have such a naturally animated compliment. face. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't know what I think about my caricature. I like me I best mean, in a caricature. I didn't veto it, so <laughs> the fact it's that awesome. it's out there in the world is, you know, I have something to do with that. Mm-hmm. But you birthed um, the baby. Yeah, I, I think the hair and the glasses and all that, I'm kind of carved up a little bit. I'm kind of like, a, a, like I have a sh- sort of a shredded face in my caricature. And I, I don't know, do I, do I have a shredded? Well, shredded sounds, I mean, shredded sounds awful. Oh, Lord, see, now this is what happens. So you can't look at it that way. It's supposed to be an animated version of yourself. If you found yourself Accentu- in a cartoon. It's supposed to accentuate your characteristics? No, it's like if you found yourself in a cartoon, if you woke up, in a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon strip, that's what you'd look like. You're talking about me. That's yeah, how I, I mean, like, I think that's what you'd look like. All right. I mean, I think my nose looks a wee bit big in mine. Well, Not so that for those of you out there listening, perhaps you can uh, give us a little, little uh, <laughs> share little your feedback. thoughts about yes. our caricatures. You but can... major shout out to Jamil she was, for yeah. job well done. Yes, absolutely. So, all right, we're talking about social media today. Yes. And we're going to go through a timeline of social media, which will be very interesting. But first, let's talk about what is your, what's your experience with social media right now? So my experience with social media is that I have none. I am very intentionally not on any social media. And that will actually even what is social media will be up for a wee bit of a debate between you and I later on. But like, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Snapchat. I'm not on Pinterest. I'm not on. I I don't even know all of these. You have things. zero profile. I have zero profile. I thought you were on Instagram, but, but no, now. my husband is on Instagram. Oh, and okay. So That's I how you will, get some. You get some recon. From, yes, from him. I will sometimes dig into his just to sort of 
because then I feel like I'm like living in a cave if I don't have you, something. You need a fix every now and then. That's what you're saying. Every now and then, the voyeur in me comes now, out. Were you ever on social media? I so I was. So when Facebook first came out, I was on Facebook and then very intentionally got off for a couple of reasons. One was that I had a client reach out to me through Facebook in what I considered to be an unboundaried kind of way. And I thought, oh, yeah. very simple solution to this problem. But then it was also when, like, fa- what was that? Like, farm farm animals, farm... When, like, remember it was, like, one of the very first things on Facebook where, like, oh, you had a the farm, game. the game. And what people would, that? like, get fired up at me because I didn't send them a cow or a pig back or whatever it was. And I was like, this is a gigantic waste of my time. Like, I have a lot of other better things to be doing than, like, giving you a virtual pig. Mm-hmm. And so I was but, like, so you, So you let go of Facebook, but were you, uh, farm, thank you, Brandon, Farmville. Yeah! That's what Farmville. That was. Yeah. Still involved pigs and cows. Yeah. <laughs> Farm animals, a, a, a very <laughs> agrarian game. So, uh, but no other, no other social media. No, never have. Ever that have. was it. I All mean, right. I, I know that we're going to get into this debate later, but like I was once on AOL Instant Messenger. Right. That doesn't count. Yeah. Right. And you're in this uh, preview. You're going to be more on the faux side of the, the yes, question for I, social media. Yes, I. I'm going to land on the majority of the faux. Okay. I do not think it's. So I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And and I was a, a relatively early adopter of Facebook and Twitter. Oh, I don't know, like around 2012 or something like that. And Long time. and I really didn't get Twitter at first. At, well, even leading up to it, I didn't I didn't get the appeal of it. Um, but it's th- for but very th- concise people. I am not. Less so now that that, that 140 character limit has been relaxed, so you can you can be more verbose. Um, and then Instagram. So so f- for me on, on Facebook, I've got I don't know over 500 Facebook friends. And do you? But see, do you have 500 friends? I do. Well, I I view Facebook as as fun personal social media for me, and I just I celebrated a birthday yesterday. Yeah, you did, old man. And um, and one of the nice things about Facebook is that you get birthday wishes throughout the day from people from various episodes of your life. So I'm getting, you know, from childhood, different places I've worked, uh, all over the country. So that, that was And if I was on was Facebook, really nice. I would have remembered to wish you a Thank happy you. birthday. I know. I, Sorry. Happy I got the birthday yeah. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Craig. Happy birthday to you. So, um, yeah, and so Instagram is also social for me, but it's much smaller. Like, I don't follow nearly as many people. And, and, and so Instagram is more sort of what Facebook was at the very beginning for me, very tight. And then um, Twitter is really about work for me. That's, that's how I, I get professional thoughts out there. And um, So you have very promote. specific... Uh, I kind of have a plan avenues for each. for each one of them. Like yes. they each have a very specific yeah. purpose yeah. for you. And Instagram, I, I'm really, if I put something on Instagram, I really want it to be a cool image. I, I'm, I'm, I'm driven by the original concept of Instagram that it's about photography. So I try to up my game. And that's when, when we get so into the So you're an Instagram debate. snob. I, I am a little bit in terms of what I put up there. Um, yeah. Now, my, my oldest son is on Snap and Instagram. Not Facebook. So when it comes to photographs of, of my sons, I can put whatever I want on Facebook. And I don't get any complaints because no one's ever going to see it, even if it's like goofy pictures of them. But I have to get permission from my oldest son if I put anything on Instagram. And I even have to be careful if it's a picture of one of his brothers because he might see it and then let them know. And, you know, my sons can be a little persnickety about being, you know, well, permitted perhaps on social because media. he's an adolescent. Well, yeah, but even my eight-year-old, my twelve-year-old, can get really self-conscious well, about. Well, but I think, on, I mean, on, what I think is Instagram. interesting, and I don't know how far we'll get down this rabbit hole this go round. But I think, I mean, you talk about your eight-year-old. I have an eight-year-old as well, right? That they have an understanding of social media and the impact of it and the reach of it in ways that, I mean, I don't even think that we have because we didn't right. have that in our like. They are growing up with this, right. so we will be doing something. Their natives my, were immigrants, right? Oh. That was profound. So, 
we will be doing something and my son will say, put, put, post this on Instagram. Like if we're doing something really? cool. And I always have to remind him, I'm like, monkey, we're not, uh, mom's not on Instagram, right? And he'll be like, send it to dad. So I think- Wait, There's, send it? To, he says it. You, like if, we're, if I'm doing something, dad. like send a picture to dad so dad can post it on Instagram. I thought you said you sit, told him to send no. it to dad. <laughs> no, we do not have phones yet in our house. But I think it's interesting that they really understand that as a vehicle to put something out there. So so they are growing up with this whole idea that this is right. just normal. Right. And and I mean, I when I said that before about like I have to get my inner like voyeur fix – I really feel sometimes – well, I know that a big reason why I'm not on is because I'm a fiercely private person. But I really do feel like I'm infringing upon other people's privacy or that they are infringing on mine. Well, yeah, I can I – can, being private is mm-hmm. entirely your prerogative and you might want to share stuff. But there's – I mean, don't feel like you're infringing on other people's privacy. Right. They I mean, made a decision to put it up like, there. I, I think I sometimes get – do you ever get that feeling when, like, you are watching somebody do something and they think they're really awesome at it and they're maybe not as awesome and you start to get internally embarrassed on their behalf? Okay, like, yeah, there's I am that. One of those, okay, so I'm one of those people that, like, I can't I can't watch. Like, I, I physically have to drop my head and, and not look, right? I yeah. love if people are confident in themselves and put themselves out there, but it makes me anxious. When people post stuff on Instagram – and I realize that as a clinician, I have a different lens and filter with which I take in people's thoughts and feelings and like the intention behind that and maybe what's what's sort of driving the bus. But I sometimes see people's posts and I get embarrassed on their behalf or right. I get worried for them on their behalf. So yeah. it's like I, I feel like I'm stepping into a person's life in a way that's not appropriate. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. I understand. I yeah. mean – Esoteric, I know. All right. Well, let's let's talk about history. Okay. History of social media. So, um, our producer Brandon uh, did some research for us and and got some milestones, a timeline of social media. So, uh, let's go all the way back to 1973, last century. Douglas Brown and Dave Woolley created a multi-user chat room application called Tacomatic. That's now that's. That's, that sounds like it should be a tiny robot. tiny robot. Either that or a machine that dispenses tacos. <laughs> but no, that's T A L K. This is a T A L K as opposed to a T A. I was about to say a T A K O. Nobody ever said I was smart. 1980, the bulletin board system, the BBS, which is like. BS. Emerged as one of the earliest forms of social media. Users uploaded and downloaded data, read news and bulletins, and exchanged messages through public message boards. Throughout the 1980s, bulletin board systems evolved, eventually allowing users to exchange information internationally. So when it, I guess when it first launched, it was it had a very small catchment area or a sm- very small network, and then it was a big deal to suddenly have people in other countries. And now we don't oh, even yeah. think about borders when it comes to social no, media. No, not at all. So, big milestone, 1990, computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web, WWW. And in 1996, Bolt.com was founded as one of the first social networking sites on the Internet. And Bolt included daily horoscopes, chat rooms, message boards, photo albums, Internet radio, browser games, blogs, a lot of the stuff that we think of now. I was going to say, I mean, that sounds a lot like what we've got going on now. 1997, SixDegrees.com really shaped the social networking landscape. It was named after the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. No, I'm kidding. Six right, Degrees yeah. of Separation concept. Users could invite friends, family members, and acquaintances to the site, and users had the ability to post bulletin board items to people in their first, second, and third degrees. This was the start of the social circles network model. I have a very vague memory of that. See, and I was never on that. What's super funny is degrees. no. But, you know, I feel like, and as I was reading through this timeline, one of the things that became aware to me, I mean, I am obviously backwards when it comes to this whole thing, but I remember sort of just getting onto email. Like when I graduated college, right, it was right around this time. And yeah, it for was me too. right the beginning of, oh my gosh, email. You know, and and so the fact that this other stuff was going on was not even in my like I had no idea this stuff mm-hmm. existed. Yeah. I just thought email was fancy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So 1997, AOL Instant Messenger was released. So that's over 20 years ago. 
And in 99, Yahoo Messenger launched to compete with AOL Instant Messenger. 2003, LinkedIn launched as the first business-oriented social networking service. Now, I, this was interesting to, to learn. I wouldn't have that, said it would have been around. It, that it predates Facebook. I was going to say. And and I, it, I that thought was, it came later. So I that, would have thought it would came later, too. Yeah. And I, I didn't mention LinkedIn as part of my social You're, media portfolio, but I'm on LinkedIn as well. And see, what's funny, though, is I don't consider that to be social media. But I, you know, I know we're going to keep like referencing this debate we're going to well, get to later, but yeah, I don't feel like that's social media. It's not, it is networking, but it's, I don't view it as social at all. Like I'm not connecting with Well, because with it's so purposeful so, and it's business yes. oriented, right? Like I don't yeah. consider doing something business oriented as being social now, but there's yeah. so many people's lines of work that require them to be right. Social and rub elbows and I get messages from LinkedIn every week about how many searches I appeared in. Well, and which is yes, weird. So where people. Look I guess at I you. could go. I, I don't do anything with that notification, but I guess maybe I could go into LinkedIn and find out who's been looking, who's for, looking like headhunters up. are looking. Well, for I was going to say. I mean, if don't you worry, were I'm not in, leaving. Yeah, I was going to say. Watch people get nervous. Cue Dave and Frank to get nervous. Um, that. For a lot of people, this is how a lot of the job search world is now shifting. Right. Like LinkedIn is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is thinking about hiring you, they look at your LinkedIn page yeah. and how active right. it is. Yeah. And Yeah. Uh, so in 2003, one of the most popular social networking sites of all time, MySpace, launched. It really shook up the landscape in regards to look, feel, and customization. It was the number one social network up until 2008 when it was just when it was dethroned by Facebook, which launched in 2004. Facebook has evolved from its social networking roots. It is now constantly in front of Congress. No, I'm kidding. It is now a <laughs> well, yeah. marketplace, instant There's messenger, that. live video platform, video calling service, and much, much more. In 2005, Reddit and YouTube launched, followed by Twitter in 2006. And Twitter had a unique angle on social media with a formula consisting of micro-messaging and SMS-styled conversations for quick, real-time conversation. 2010, Pinterest and Instagram launched and everyone's self-esteem tanked, <laughs> followed by Snapchat in 2011. And 2011, also Google jumped into the ring mm. with Google+. Plus. I think Google+, Plus is going to the, to the way of like the Dodo MySpace, bird? yeah. Yeah. I don't hear any I don't know anybody who's on Google Plus. I'm not on Google Plus. Well, I never knew it was again, you know, a social media platform other than if we were wanting to do like a different version of Skype, like if you were coming into a meeting. Um 2013 right. Vine, a 6-second video sharing media launched. I was never on Vine, but I was aware of it and and we did some things here at Southeast Psych on Vine to, to promote. Well, isn't that also going the way? Like, aren't... I don't hear anybody... Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I feel like that. Yep. Which is, these things just come and go. Fads, people, fads. Yeah, a lot of them are. 2015, a strictly live video sharing app, Periscope, launched. Periscope, I was I was aware of. And we um, we did some things at Southeast Psych on Periscope. We, we, we broadcasted some that. events. And, you know... It, we're 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 glossing over a lot of stuff I mean, here. Yeah. And what Because funny, I don't see Snap on here. Oh no, we did say Snap. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of products launch and then has uh, they have unique features and then the older guard absorbs them, buy, either develops their own version. I was going to say. Or they they out and out buy the company. So some of the things that like that Vine and Periscope do now you just you do it on Facebook or you do it on Twitter it's you don't Well need and the a, big a the big media giants that. so quickly jump on this stuff and I mean interestingly I just saw that Pinterest is getting ready to go public like there was a whole big news thing about that mm -hmm. um, so I mean I think these big ones just absorb these little or smaller ones that may have great ideas but right. they can just come along and Right. You know and we didn't mention along in here uh, uh, smartphones and how that changed so much with, with social media because, you know, at the beginning of the, like the big heyday of social media, you had like MySpace, you really needed, it's kind of designed to be on a laptop or a desktop or something. And then now, now you've got these ubiquitous devices that allow you to be on social media constantly if you want to. 
Well, and I think that's one of, you know, the dangers of where some of this is going is that it's the perpetuality of it. It's that you cannot, you know, put it down, walk away. I mean, I see some people constantly wandering around with their laptops and see them sort of open, but that that's not the norm. But our phones fit in our back pockets, which means at every brief moment that we may have that's not occupied with something, we can pick them up and head into that social media verse. And, and here's my thought about where social media is going. I think the the barriers to access are going to keep coming down in the same what way that we've gone from needing to be on a laptop to now you've got a small device you can carry anywhere. I think the devices are going to become less important. It's going to be more cloud-based, and there's going to be ways to access things. You're making me nervous, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it, I think it's going to make some people nervous and some people really happy that you can smoothly interface with things like with a heads up display or um, a hologram or um, just kind of be, being surrounded by dumb interfaces that read your 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 um, face recognition or whatever. And then suddenly you can you can access your social media wherever you're sitting, wherever you're standing, wherever you're walking. So, you know, like you go to the, I was at the gym this morning and a lot of people bring their device and then, you know, watch. But I don't think you need that. There'll just be a dumb screen and you'll come in and maybe you enter a code or something and then you'll be able to access all your preferences and then the device will just play what's on the cloud for you. That's where I think we're going. Well, and I realize that I am the the daughter of a, a security expert, but like that makes me so unbelievably nervous. Mm-hmm. Right. And I feel like it is fueling a couple of things. I think people are super naive to believe that you are not being tracked through your social media. I mean, I am not a black helicopter circling above head kind of person. I'm actually the exact opposite of that. But I do believe that you are pretty naive if you don't think that there is certain tracking that is going on through the use of some of this stuff. And it is fueling this disconnection that is happening between human beings that I think can directly correlate to the rise of depression within our society. A lot of mental health implications oh, that we're going to get into. And the whole privacy thing, that's a good segue for our game that's going to be coming up here in just a little bit. Joining us as usual is our quiz mistress extraordinaire, Mara Teal. Mara is a therapist, writer, and mom. She is here to moderate the latest chapter of the quiz throwdown between me and Craig and to continue to let me win. And I hear that you've got something special in store for us, Mara. I do. I do. This is a very interesting one, Craig, especially for you. So this quiz is called Who Knows Craig Better, Craig or Facebook? Thought we'd throw you a little bone here. Since you've lost the last two, right. you should 100% get this a one correct. fighting chance. Yes. Do I know my life? Okay. Yes. So, so how's this going to work? Okay. So here, oh. I'm just going to win. What? I'm just, yeah, I'm winning. That's just great. sitting over here Good. winning. Yep. Um, okay. So we've downloaded Craig's info from Facebook and created questions based off of that information. So Craig, you are allowed two guesses. The first <laughs> guess is without um, a clue. Second guess with a clue. Obviously, you get more points if you get it correct without. Okay. Um, fights gets a point when you get it wrong. So, so prepare once again. Yeah. I, I'm, my hands are sweaty. So, yeah. I'm I nervous mean, about this. Yeah. And can I add, it was incredibly easy to download all my information from Facebook. I mean, yeah, it could have fallen into the wrong hands. It's a I did disturbing. participate in picking out the questions, but I felt like I was fair and just. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. All right. Ready? My ready for your pumping. first one? Yep. Okay. What year... Did you join Facebook? And I will just say, you get extra points if you get month, day, time. Okay. Correct. Wow. I think uh, 2009, which would be a 10-year anniversary. And I'm going to guess, oh, February. Man, you're pretty dang close. I'm, yeah, I'm impressed. I'm going to give you 2,000 points for that. 
Um, it was Tuesday, January 6th, 2009, specifically at 8.31 p.m. That's crazy. That's in there? Yep. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. What were you doing Tuesday, January 6th at 8.30 p.m.? Should have been hanging out with wow. Jen. <laughs> and you weren't. Maybe we were doing that together. Next I'll month we can <laughs> download for, for you know, Jen's info. All right. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Way to go. Okay. Um, second one. Facebook says that you've lived in five different locations, Charlotte being one of them. Name the other four. Wait, would this be since joining Facebook? Uh, there's no, you don't get to like ask questions. You should just know this or mm -hmm. not. Okay. Um, oh, that's weird. It says I've lived in five places since joining Facebook. I mean. And Charlotte being one of them? Yes. Clarification question. Well, the other would be Carborough, North Carolina. One would be. Okay. You said there are, four, there are four other ones? Four. Uh, I'm going to guess that it's Bozeman, Montana, because I think I put that in there as okay. my hometown. And I'm going to say Providence, Rhode Island, because I went to college. And then one more. Two more. Two more. <laughs> um, are you helping? You know, uh, I, what are you yeah. feeling? Sorry for I him? Sympathy. Maybe, Sympathy maybe help yeah. is happening. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and Dallas, Texas. Eh? I'm just naming places I've lived. That's just like <laughs> I was like, Facebook. now you, now you right, stretch right. it. I think we're like, done. I think we're done with this one. Fights, you get 500 points. Thank you. Because As well I should. it feels a little bit embarrassing that you yourself are not able to name the places that you have lived. But so, you said since I joined Facebook. So we've got New York, New York. Got you got Carbro, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, I don't think the question was very clear. Um. Because oh. I and and a Brand and our producers blames. over there said when I said was it since Facebook and he gave me a thumbs up is then I have to name in the last I mean obviously I know where I've lived well apparently not as well as Facebook apparently All right, I'm still in the lead okay I'm still in the lead All right Ushu. where did you and your son go on May thirty first two thousand fourteen May thirty first which son Josh, can I ask that Josh. Oh, was that like May a, did he get a hint? Was that a hint? No, it was in the question. It I was in the question. Okay, my, my all fault. right. 2014, okay. May 31st, 2014. Um, did we go see Pottermore? That's your first guess? We're, we're going to give you a hint. <laughs> no, okay. With number two. Okay, so it was in Virginia. Virginia. Williamsburg. So no. <laughs> I don't know how else to respond to that other than incorrect. Okay. You get 500 points for fights. Okay. So. Winning and doing damn. nothing. Which I'm a little bit intrigued by. That. So it says you and Josh went to Hog Haven too, and all hogs go to Haven. I'm thinking that there was a typo here and that it's actually all dogs go to heaven too. <laughs> Is Very like confused. <laughs> if the you can movie? see Brandon right now, we're giving him negative 500 points for the inability to spell. What the hell? Like what? <laughs> I looked it up to see if it was a thing. Apparently not. There is a... All dogs go to heaven and all hogs go to haven. There is a hog haven in Colorado, however, not in Virginia. So I'm thinking... Y'all went to the movies. All right, let's move on. Yep, okay. Let's move on. <laughs> I don't know. Facebook. Schmish book. <laughs> Still leading, okay. winning. You, you are, but you're starting to lose momentum here. Okay, so number four. This one is, this is a disturbing thing, but anyway, okay. Um, how many advertisers uploaded um, a contact list with your information? I put this question in here on purpose because it should make you nervous. Yeah. Uh, 700. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint, although I'm just going to be honest, I don't think this hint's Super helpful. But at one point, you shared this information with advertisers or their data partners. That's not helpful at right, all. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. So do you want just throw out another number out there? 2,000. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to give you 1,500 points for that. Price is right rules here. Okay. Yeah. Roughly 2,378. Roughly. That's amazing. So, so, so that's how many advertisers got my yeah. information. Yep. 
through advertisers, Facebook. not yep. necessarily products. That's crazy. Make you nervous. That's crazy. It's nuts. All right, last question. Um, what movie did you go see July twenty second, two thousand fifteen, at eleven twenty six p.m. Ooh, that should give you a big. PM? That should give you a big hint. So, what does that tell you? It probably was. Why, what, are, you, why are you giving hints? I, over I, there? I don't know. I feel sorry for him. It was July something. I feel bad for him. Why is it, give me the date again. Um, July twenty second, two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Eleven twenty six p.m. That's a weird time to go to a movie. A- agreed. Unless it's and. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? I don't know. I don't Stop know. Talking. I'm sorry. I did not go see Rocky right Horror Picture Show that night. That would have been an obvious candidate <laughs> for going to like a midnight show or something. Okay. Um, oh, now I have all of the music stuck in my head. 2015. Damn it. I'm really Janet, blanking on what the big blockbusters you. were then. I mean, but I, you know what? This this maybe this is a time zone thing. Like maybe it was on vacation um, out west. Actually, it does not give. It, this is, let's we're stalling. Give Producer me an Brandon is shaking his head. I'm going to say it was Ant Man. Went and saw that movie. Great! <laughs> oh, you just let out a piece of information. Ant about Man yourself. is one of the Ant best Man, movies really? of the MCU. Okay, no, that's incorrect. Well, Paul Rudd is he awesome. He has an acronym for it. It's MCU. <laughs> okay. The actual answer is Sharknado 3, to be I exact. I didn't go see that. I saw it in the cover of my own home. Well, you saw it. I don't know. I that was don't... a misleading question. That put me in a completely different you... universe of entertainment. <laughs> so, Martin, you notice I was throwing him off the scent. No, I didn't. Yeah, because then I was trying to get him to think it was like an opening, like Harry Potter 7. Let me say... That I'm a big fan of the Sharknado series, and I shared a lot of my feelings about the Sharknado series on okay, social media. Okay, bonus. Oh, there you go. If you share a sentence that you said about the movie, I will give you some points here. That it's the most awesome movie about flying sharks ever made? I mean, I'm going to give you 2,000 points just for that. There you go. To be exact, you said... Sympathy points. It was the single best movie about sharks and tornadoes yes. that you have seen this summer. I stand by that. <laughs> I stand by that. a lot of competition that. in that pool. It but, holds up. Yeah, okay. And, it holds and, up. And shout out from Six Degrees of Kevin Baking, Ian Ziering, Luke Perry. Rest in peace Right, this yes. Week. Yeah. yeah. My 90210 days. So, um, um, so uh, you know, what's the final tally? Um, you win, I lose. It's all that you, matters. you win. You and Craig, finally. I know finally. more about my I life was going than to say. Okay, uh, well, can yes. we talk about the fact Streak that this was an over. Un- unfair game? Unfair Streak game. Streak begun. <laughs> unfair well, game. Well, didn't, he didn't get every question correct, no, so know. Facebook knows you a little bit better. Okay, we will say that Brandon, our producer, he was impressed with your data, that um, you've actually done a pretty good job of protecting yourself. You haven't... Um, you haven't linked a ton of information, personal information. You're not sharing a lot. Um, you're not checking into locations. Your credit card isn't tied to it. Oh, so well done, Mr. Those Pullman. are Those are some positives, some things in your favor. All right. Well, thank you. May the thank- odds ever be in your favor. Thank you very much, okay. Mara. Thanks awesome for Awesome game. Me. Shout out for being a woman today. Yep. There you go. Bye, guys. So, Fights, do you see social media as being problematic for your clients? Is it part of your therapy practice, helping deal pe- helping people deal with social media? Yes. It's usually the fallout from poor choices that they've made from social media or anxiety that they are experiencing because of pressures that they're feeling from social media or, you know, uh, at the end of an hour session, they turn over their phone and they have 361 text messages and they just feel this sort of anxious, ever present pressure Mm -hmm. to be on social media. Right. And we've talked about this in in other episodes that, that, that social media is an opportunity to put up a front. Oh, people put up what they think other people want to see. They put up what they think is the best version of themselves or what they think other people want to see or what's going to make them likable right. or popular or Find whatever that would be for a relationship right yeah oh, yeah okay so so you're you're off social media you've, you've disclosed that so anti-social media what do you tell clients do you do you preach doing the same do you ever coach people to pull the plug to to jump off social media go cold turkey okay so 
I will acknowledge that that is a values-based decision, right? Like I, I do what is best for me. I have encouraged people where they have clearly articulated palpable anxiety from social media about taking a break and seeing how they feel like, you know, A, what happens to their anxiety, but B, how do they feel like they're able to better function within the world, right? And and I will, you know, so it's never, a, I think you should get off social media, like finger wagging shaming, because right. I do believe it's a values-based decision. But if I have somebody articulating either continued poor decision-making through social media or or it negatively impacting their life, then yeah, like a lot of things, I'm going to say to them, what do you think would happen if you disconnected for well, a little Give while? an example of a poor decision that someone might make with social media. So I give this blanket statement to a lot of my clients that unless you are experiencing the feeling of happiness and joy, please do not pick up your phone. Right. So a lot of times what particularly happens with my adolescent and young adult clients is that they have a negative emotion, anger, fear, sadness, anxiety, rejection, and they immediately pick up their phone and use it as a tool to express an emotion that they're having in the immediate. Right. And then the problem is, is that sometimes as shortly as 15 minutes later, they regret what they posted because their feelings have changed or the circumstance itself has changed. They got first round information, reacted poorly to that, and then newer clarification comes through and they go, oh shit, I probably shouldn't have put that out on social media for everybody to see. And once you put it out there, I don't care what you say about, oh, it goes away, yada, yada, yada. It's out there forever. It's floating right. out there in the verse, you know? So I, I, I just really encourage people in general that – if you're having a negative emotion, that's a time to walk away from your phone. Engage in healthy coping skills. Find a live human being to have a conversation with. I had a, a colleague um, several years ago, a shout out, Jeff Lau. He was the director of the IT department in this institute where I worked. And he said, so this is before social media was really a thing, but he said, never email in anger. Yes. And so you just sort of translate that. And I've I've remembered that and I've applied that. And so you're saying the same thing. Don't go to social media in anger. No, and fill in the blank. Don't tweet in anger. Right, yeah, don't yeah, exactly. Instagram in anger. Post. Don't yes. I mean it's yeah, I don't I don't even know the correct vernacular. But I think it is um And there are a lot of negative emotions, right? There there's frustration, there's mm -hmm. uh, uh sort of a, a need for retribution. Mm -hmm. Or if people are looking for sympathy. You know, and so they put out there and they want they want somebody to feel, you know, they want pity. They want somebody mm -hmm. to, to acknowledge their pain, which, I mean, that's a universal emotion, right? Like when we're hurting, we want people to step in and, and hope us to feel better. But but the problem is, is it's not real time and people don't know what's going on. And we don't always um, communicate well. And I think sometimes it's, it's, it's like almost baseline communication, right? We think we're communicating something accurately. And then the next thing you know, people have misconstrued, misinterpreted. I mean, and this happens to people all the time. You see them post something or tweet something or whatever, and they have to go back and apologize or clarify. And it's sort of like, you know, what would have happened if you had waited? So this is instant gratification versus delayed gratification. Here's my take on social media. I don't think it has caused, has created any new problems. I think it has just amplified longstanding problems with human nature. Like, I'll give you one example, all mm -hmm. right? So bullying, which is a, a big problem on social media, but we've had bullying since the beginning of time. And it's just, it's taken a new form. And when I say amplify, that, that means it can make it louder and it can also make it more pervasive, that more people can be in on it. Um, the whole, the idea of FOMO, mm. that is, people just experience it that, that period. It's human nature, but now it's, we've put it on, we put it online basically, we put it on all these apps. But I would take those two examples, right? That, so bullying, Okay, so you're right, 100% it has existed for forever. But a bully is at their core a coward in a lot of ways, right? So what I would challenge in that thinking is that you're right, it's been around for forever, but the ability to not have to face who you are bullying 
face to face, right? If you're going to say something mean, say it to my face. If you're going to say something hurtful, say it to my face. It's now given avenue to people and their cowardice to feel bigger than they actually are and That's to true. not have to reap the consequences. So you're right. Bullying has been there for forever. But now it, it's allowing these people to be more vicious because they don't have to take in the real-time effects of what they're saying. Fear of missing out. You're right. That's always been there for people. But now there's this entirely new um, world that exists. Like, if I had fear of missing out, I only knew what I knew if you told it to me or I heard about it, right? Or maybe, you know, good old-fashioned three-by-five pictures that you printed out. Now there can be, like, real-time. Like, students can in real-time see that their friends are someplace and they're not there. And that right. that's a it's a different kind of pain. So yeah, I mean, amplified is maybe one I, way to look at it, but uh, I feel like I, I disagree. I don't think it's a different kind of pain. I think it's the same pain mm -hmm. that I might have experienced in high school when I find out that you know my buddies are doing something and they didn't invite me. It's just it's a faster way of learning this information. But then I see the trickle down effect, right? So I see in real time that you're someplace and I'm not there. So then I pick up my phone and my social media and I start posting all kinds of stuff and I've seen this play out and then there is a much more exacerbated social fallout because then I've posted something and then you see it and then you post something and then I mean it's like this you know exponential circumstance and that there's real miscommunication that maybe these adolescents are willing to work out down the road but usually it just creates far more social chaos and hurt feelings and things that wouldn't have been said because you know if you were in high school and you saw your buddies hanging out you would have had to go up to them and face to face be like dude why didn't you invite me now it's and then you know you guys would have had to have this face-to-face -face interaction about it or you would have just gone away hurt and festered and, and been sad about it right now it's like well i'm going to post this about you well then you see it and it's on your snap story and you're posting something back we're not having a face-to-face -face interaction i don't have to stop and listen to you i don't have to see your real-time interaction to that except through my phone which i mean i just i see so many potential pitfalls and dangers and have seen it play out in such a you know, catastrophic. And I don't mean to be melodramatic, but like bad stuff has well, happened. I, I, I mean, to an extent, I think we're going to need to agree to disagree because I, I mm -hmm. really think that the emotions people are feeling are time old. I mean, this mm -hmm. is, and, and I think it's, it's the same dynamics. We've just made them digital. So, um, yeah, just a little bit. Let's, let's get into some solutions. And, and I want to share some more thoughts I have about positives with social media because there are some and i will give you i mean two things immediately come to mind as you say that we my family is a personal like a big supporter of saint jude children's research hospital right and they use social media as a platform to reach so many people right because fundraising is what makes that place exist and so i see that and i think yes like i want them to have avenues for that and to reach people and to touch people so i see that or vice versa we were talking about this as we were planning this episode of what, what did we decide? It was the rebellion that was happening in, in Egypt or Turkey. And it was the, the re female reporter that was in grave danger. And she was able to use social media to allow people to find her and locate her and, and essentially rescue her. So I see, I mean, those are two very disparate things, right? Where you right. say, okay, well, here's positives across the board. Right. But I, I feel like the bad outweighs the good. Well, let's, let's resume that discussion in just a moment. So, fights earlier, you shared a couple examples of social media being a positive, mm -hmm. and let, let me let me give uh, some other examples of that. You know, uh, like the ice bucket challenge, and. Uh, yeah, just raising awareness for causes. Here's, I think social media can uh, be positive in terms of exposing ugliness. You know, the, 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 the saying that the best disinfectant is sunlight. So here's something that happened in Charlotte here this week. I've heard that before. I like that. Really? Haven't heard yeah, that? I've literally, and I've, I'm, a, the I'm not the queen of idioms. I like it. Not the author. So here in Charlotte this week, um, there was a, a high school basketball game, a playoff basketball game between two public high schools. And one, a player on one of the teams put something incredibly 
racist and ugly on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. That it, it's the same, you know we've heard this story yep. many times. Yep. It, it was taken out immediately, but not before someone screenshot it, and then it then it got out there, and wow. and this kid was rightly dismissed from the team, and uh, it, and it was about he was racist about the other high school about going and playing this this other team, so it was just a terrible thing, but so he, here's again where I'm coming from, racism has been around. Forever, so Snapchat didn't invent racism. It gave this kid a megaphone for it, but it also exposed it. He got in major trouble for it. Whereas before, like he may have been able to get away with yeah. that, okay, and he didn't never get caught. And it opened this broader discussion that was really important in, in, beyond those two schools because yeah. throughout our community, we've had to, to to deal with this to some degree. So I think that there is good. I mean you know, sort of like peer pressure can be a positive as well as a negative. Well, and and I mean, that's a really great point and is an insight that I hadn't personally thought about before, right? This idea that, right, so this kid would have gone on being racist and it wouldn't have changed his racism, right? Mm -hmm. But perhaps through this experience, um, he'll... Maybe. Hopefully think, right? Uh, And, you know, and it's hard because, like, one of my initial thoughts was then, yeah, but... It, it, the pain that it inflicted on somebody else. For sure. So it's always the, and, and I feel like this is such a great thing that we talk about all the time. Like nothing is as good or as bad as it first seems, right? right? Like that's a quote I have on a wall in my office. And I think it's this idea that like, okay, that's a really valid point that you've made. But if we hadn't given that kid that megaphone, you're right, he's going to be a racist. But maybe the kid that he was racist about was never going to have to deal with that face to face, and probably right. he would. I mean, I don't, I don't know, yes. th- I don't know this story, right? So there's a part of me that's like, okay, well, so that's great. And what about this other person who had to have that vitriol like thrown at him? Fair point. So and, and, it's the yin and the yang. Yeah, and when someone puts something up that's that's racist, a, a lot of people are going to agree with yes. it or retweet it or, or like it or yes. whatever. But Ugh. I still. I think in a lot of situations, it's better to get it out there and have people confront it and and denounce it, which happens routinely. Like Twitter is, you know, there's a lot of shout out culture on Twitter. I know that that can be negative, but I think um, it's it's giving people a, a way to cry foul right. about some 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 attitudes. Well, but and I know that you know one of the the takeaways that we really want to draw people to is the idea of being mindful in your use. Mm-hmm. But there's a part of me that wants to say, okay, so I, I don't know the circumstance of this story, but my, I'm going to guess that this kid was having a really really emotional reaction to the result of this basketball game. It was the, actually in the lead up to the basketball. Oh, game. okay, it was in the lead, so still an emotional. He was talking <laughs> trash. Yeah. Okay. That's the most charitable way to put it, actually. <laughs> Speaking spewing garbage, um, that. He was having this emotional experience, right, and not being mindful, and so picks up his phone in this emotional reaction or response to this circumstance that he's about to find himself in. And this is this is where I keep coming back to the danger of the real-time fallout of using social media to express a big emotion. I, I think what you I, – I like where you're going with this because – now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what you're saying is that social media doesn't allow for processing time, so it it rewards impulsivity. So you have these emotional reactions, well and said. then your phone is right there. Boom! I'm going to react as opposed to before the age of social media. You can take a deep breath. You can even wait a day. You can talk offline with some people, get some counsel, get your head straight before you react. That is, yeah. So what what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do? Like, unless we coach people to get off social media or give up their phones, how, and I you realize, use mindful. Like, yeah. how do you coach mindfulness? And I, and I realize that that's not the solution, right? I mean, I do have a little bit of a temperament. Like, I'm a cold turkey kind of person. Like, if I need to quit something, I do it cold turkey. So I realize that I personally have a bias, right? But I think it's the idea of having – so if you're a parent and you're getting ready to allow your kid to have social media – So, I mean, I think, first of all, you should be following. Like, if your kids can have social media, then they should have to follow you. you got to follow you on Instagram. you got to be their friend on Snapchat or whatever At least at the beginning. At least at the beginning, right? Until they learn. Like a probationary period. Right, because they've got to learn. And then I think it's the idea of having intentional conversations, right? So the idea of what is the purpose 
of social media. And I would ask if you're an adult, why do you have social media? Like I would ask yourself that question. Do you have it because you have fear of missing out and you feel this need to make sure that you're on top of what everybody's doing and saying at all times so that you can be part of it, right? Or are you using it because you do have sort of like what you said, like I have an artistic temperament and I want to be able to post cool pictures on Instagram and invite people into causes that I think are important. Like if that's why you have it, yay for you and continue to use it. If you're constantly supporting great causes or whatever. So, I mean, I think it's the idea of question why you're using it, have a, have a means and a purpose behind that, Make sure you've got your values in check. And then please, before you pick up your phone to use social media as a means to communicate anything, do a check. Check in with yourself. Why am I doing this? Should I be saying this? Is this something that I want? You know, would I say this to this person's face if they were standing in front of me? That That's really good. And so, you know, we can talk about utility or purpose sort of in a global way, like why, like I was talking earlier, like why, how do I use Twitter? Like how does that fit into my portfolio of social media? But you can drill down to the purpose of a post. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tweet something or put a video or, or, or like or something, like why are you doing this? Which is about being mindful and, and thinking, so, so this, this would be a good strategy with teenagers. So if they're with a bunch of their friends and they take a selfie, and they want to put this selfie up on Instagram, think about why do you want to do that? Because if it's a great photo that you want to share with your friends, why not just text it them? Why does it need to be on Instagram for other people to see? What's your purpose? Is it because exactly. you want, you know, because you either want to show somebody who's not there, right? that they're not there? Are you looking because you want likes? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think... Um, as you were talking, I sort of had this thought that, of course, just flew out of my mind because I wanted are, to say as it. As they are want to do. As they are want to do. Um, so keep going. Hopefully it'll come back to me okay. in a moment. Darn. Yeah, I think um, just, you know, mindfulness, so important. Just taking that moment, taking that pause to, to think about what you're doing in that moment. Um, oh, know, I knew what it was. Think skill. So there's a DBT skill called THINK. It's an acronym. But the last two... So and the, DBT is... Oh, Dialectical Behavior Therapy. It is a, um, a research-based, empirically supported treatment modality. But the N stands for, is it necessary? Okay. And then the K stands for, is it kind? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we should all be nice all the time, right? There's a, there's a moment to stand your ground. There's a moment to stand up for yourself. There's a moment to maybe not be so warm and fuzzy. But, you know, I would use that, and I really encourage my clients all the time. Is what you're about to post necessary? And 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 make sure that's a feeling, not a fact, or like a fact, not a feeling, right? Because sometimes we think things are necessary. Mm -hmm. And is it kind? And, and here's, okay, so I'm going to go back to my point. That I, I think we're, we're talking about techniques to help people manage social media that you use off social media as well. It's the same, like you're, you're pulling in stuff from DBT that's just about human interaction. Right. And we're just applying, that. That's I but just why, don't think social media is presenting anything new. It's just But why amplifying. should there be a difference? I mean, why should the way that you live your life on social media not be the way that you live out your life all the rest of the time? Like Ruth. to me, those should be Ruth. the same thing. My persona on social media should match the persona that I put out all the rest of the time that I'm in existence. Facebook took down Frank's pixelated crotch photo almost immediately. But not before a slew of comments were posted, the vast majority of which were polarized. Many conjectured that Frank had lost his mind and that because of this crass photo, he would lose his good name and career. But about as many raved about how funny it was, realizing that he wasn't actually wielding his own lightsaber in a movie theater. Facebook reviewed the situation and determined that the photo was not, technically speaking, lewd. So before the movie started, the photo was reposted. And there it sits today, in Frank's Facebook photo album for all to see, if, of course, you're friends with him. Brandon Gage is our producer, Sean Beck is our sound engineer, theme music composer, and video editor, 
Executive producers are Dave Verhagen and Frank Gaskell. Contributors to this episode were Rachel Kitson and Mara Teal. Jamil Moore is our graphic design intern, and Bailey Sito is our marketing intern. Jesse DiBiase radiates enough sunshine to power a mid-size solar park and gets me my Starbucks when I ask. <laughs> that fix. You'll find more practical psychology to enhance your life on our website, psychbytes.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, at psychbytes. You can also reach us via email, podcast at psychbytes.com. We are available just about anywhere you find your podcasts, including Spotify, YouTube, and iTunes. Please spread the word and subscribe. Your positive ratings and reviews really help us build our audience, so we very much appreciate your help doing that for us. Please send us questions. We love answering them. Also, share your thoughts and suggestions for future show topics. We love suggestions, too. Until next time, I'm Craig Pullman. I'm Fights, and this is the Psych Bites Podcast. Podcast.